Completing Pokemon Red with a horsey was a super easy run. There's no doubt about that. For today's video, I wanted to take a look into something in Gen 2 that you've probably forgotten about. Except you've probably figured it out by looking at the title, but you get what I mean. Quillfish. This weird little poison water pufferfish is an odd one. It never got an evolved form after Gen 2, and has basically never been used in... anything. There aren't any major characters in the anime that own a quillfish, and when you look at it, you kinda have to remember that it's a Pokemon. But I've been trying to give a lot more Pokemon a second chance recently, Stantler being the main example, so maybe quillfish is gonna make an impact on me. Quillfish has a base stat total of 430 in Gen 2, which is not the usual low stat total that we're used to in these runs. This means the run probably won't be ridiculous, but if I'm ever at a type disadvantage, then things could go south very quickly. Speed and attack are good, but everything else is pretty mediocre. Something that just happened to catch my eye is that it has a higher base stat total than Dugtrio and Swoobat of all things. Just thought that was interesting. Its level up moves are definitely unique. Starting out with Spikes, Poison Sting, and Tackle is incredibly unique. I'm so used to being crippled with just one or two moves at the beginning. The TM moves are interesting as well, but I'll cover those when I reach them in the game. Before we start, let's cover the rules of the run. I'll be using only Quillfish in battle, and nothing else. HM slaves will be caught, but never used in battle. Items will not be used in battle, but held items are okay to use, and I will not be evolving Quillfish. For obvious reasons. I used the Pokemon Randomizer to replace Totodile with Quillfish and realized that it might have been not a great choice for my rival. Since I have Poison Sting and am part Poison, we actually resist the moves from Chikorita. Anyways, Quillfish replaced Totodile, and our female Quillfish became known as Mrs. Puff. In my first battle with my rival, Poison Sting poisoned Chikorita, and it was just over at that point. I really wonder if Totodile would have been a tougher battle. I named my rival Mr. Puff, too. This was really dumb, it seemed like a funny idea in the moment. I was a little worried about Sprout Tower because of my aforementioned water type, but Vine Whip does neutral damage to me because of my poison type, and Poison Sting doesn't destroy the Bell Sprout, but it gets just enough damage in. Faulkner was just like every other encounter I've ever had with him. He's just a lame trainer. I went straight into this battle without healing and used Minimize a few times just to be safe, and Faulkner's birds became flightless. I learned Water Gun in the Slowpoke well and went straight for Bugsy. His team was super lame, but we all know that about Kakuna and Metapod. Scyther is the real deal. Poison Sting does barely anything and it started setting up Fury Cutter. I minimized a few times just to make some kind of dent in it, but his quick attacks had remarkable accuracy. I switched over to Water Gun and it did a lot more damage. Bugsy's bugs were squashed. Mr. Puff stopped me from going into the Ilex Forest. He sent out Ghastly, but swapped over to Bayleaf immediately. Poison Sting quickly took down the best starter form. Yes, don't at me about it, it's a proven fact, and Razor Leaf could have crit a whole lot, but it went down. Ghastly barely did anything, and Zubat got swamped. This battle was super uneventful. I caught an Oddish to use Cut and named it Baplin. Just syllables I thought of. I also caught a Psyduck and named it Duck. Whitney scared me a little bit, but I poisoned Clefairy on the first turn. It barely did anything to me, like maybe 1 or 2 HP of damage. Then came the cow. I poisoned it first turn too, and it used rollout. Even though I used minimize twice, it never missed a rollout and took me down. The second attempt had the same thing happen with Clefairy, and Miltank was poisoned again. I skipped minimize and just went straight for water gun this time. It still hit twice with rollout, but because I kept pushing, the cow became ground beef. I hatched the egg I got from Professor Elm's aid, and got... Egg. Above Goldenrod, I picked up Rollout. This move is a huge gamble, but it became my favorite move of the run. I replaced Spikes, and I didn't love replacing it, but it just wasn't helping me out that much. I then learned Pin Missile in place of Poison Sting. This was a huge gamble too, but it came in handy as well. This is where all the big decisions happened in the run. I got Surf from the Kimono Girls to get rid of Water Gun. It's super powered, and even though I could learn Hydro Pump, I need the accuracy of Surf to really get stuff done. I headed into Morty's gym and then promptly got kicked out. Well, Mr. Puff's battle in the Burnt Tower was basic, as in basically nothing. 
Surf almost took out Haunter, then it used Curse to finish itself, Magnemite went down in one Surf, and Zubat went down in one rollout. Rollout didn't have quite enough power to beat Bayleaf in one hit, so I took some damage from Curse and Razor Leaf, then I won and fell through the floor. I never had Crystal growing up, one of the only mains Pokemon games that I didn't own, and some of the additions are just kinda neat, like everything having a nice coat of polish over it. Actually getting in the gym this time, I battled Morty with 9 HP left. I was hoping I could just roll out the team, and if I had had just a little more HP, I probably could have, but Curse took me out. Second attempt, I did the same thing. Roll out, got Cursed, but Haunter and Curse didn't take me out. Roll out knocked out Gengar in one hit, and then his last Haunter was Steamrolled. Very nice. I picked up Flitwick the Pidgeotto and Olymp the Miltank. I battled through the tower to reach Jasmine, then headed towards Cienwood. Once there, I battled Yuzine, and his name is Mystical Man Yuzine. That is the coolest name ever. I'm gonna start going by Mystical Man. And that might get me arrested, but it'll be worth it. Oh, and that's the battle, by the way, I won. I realized I forgot to learn strength before getting to the gym, so I had to surf back and get the surf a gym. But I did something unusual this time and battled Jasmine before heading back. I used Rollout on Magnemite and got one shot with Thunderbolt. That wasn't very fun. This time I opted for Surf. It took out both Magnemite in one hit and almost got Steelix, but Steelix got healed with a Hyper Potion. It used a critical Iron Tail, but didn't really do that much, even then. Steelix was swamped. I hatched the odd egg from the daycare couple and named our cute little Ella kid Buzz Jr. Now, with strength, I battled Chuck and took down Primeape in two hits. Polyrath couldn't be surfed to death and it hit me with hypnosis, and I became confused from Dynamic Punch too, while being asleep. I finally woke up, hit myself in confusion, and fainted. Second attempt was incredibly similar even getting put to sleep and becoming confused. I broke confusion, set up rollout, took down Polyrath. If I had just had a super effective move, things would have been so much easier. But even then, it wasn't that bad. I battled the Red Gyarados at the Lake of Rage, ran Team Rocket out of Mahogany Town, and battled Price. Because his team is made up of ice types, I just used rollout over and over. Seal is surprisingly only pure water, but the rest of the team is part ice and Dugong and Piloswine went down in one hit each. The Radio Tower takeover was boring, but the battle with my rival was actually tough for the first time. I used Rollout to take down Golbat, but I got confused in the process. Magnemite got lucky that I hit myself in confusion, then paralyzed me. Surf was a one-hit KO on Magnemite, and Haunter and Sneasel, who's correctly colored in this game, took two Rollouts. I was hoping Rollout would be more powered up when Meganium popped out, but I was paralyzed and I just kept freezing in spot. In the second attempt, I didn't get confused, so I was able to take down everything before it could paralyze or confuse me. Pin Missile shined against Meganium, almost taking it down in one hit, but then it just used Reflect, getting me the win. Also, the Ice Cave looks super cool in this game. I had no idea it looked like this in Crystal. Claire's battle stunk. I always started the battle out with Minimize, and every single time it would paralyze me with Thunder Wave. It didn't matter how many times I minimized, it would just land all the hits it needed to. And I had to go through two more Dragonair and a Kingdra. Oh, and her second Dragonair has Thunderbolt. That really stunk. When I finally won, I minimized, still got paralyzed, continued to minimize five more times, then tried to just roll out through the rest of the battle. At first I started missing my moves, but eventually, everything started looking up. Her Dragonair that had Thunderbolt went down before it could strike, and her Kingdra failed with Smokescreen, letting me hit it for a one-hit KO. I then had to jump through all sorts of hoops to actually get the badge in the Dragon's Den. I remember this little shack being in the remakes, but I had never seen it in Crystal. It looks cool. I got the badge, and this free Jatini for kicks and giggles. I named it Durgan. In my final battle with my rival, he led with Sneasel, so I started the rollout, and rolled through Magneton. Pin Missile took down Kadabra, rollout on Golbat, Surf on Haunter, and Pin Missile on Meganium with a massively clutch 4-hit Pin Missile. Mr. Puff has been popped. I decided to just go straight into the Elite Four, and even though I'm at such a low level, it really wasn't a huge deal. That is, once I got past Will. 
I had to level up a little bit to get past him. I thought Rollout and Pin Missile would take care of everything on his team. It didn't. Confused Ray and Psychic were the two biggest annoyances in this run. My very first attempt, I got confused and hit myself every single time. I jumped up to level 67, and the same thing happened, except I fought through the confusion this time. I used Rollout, which took two hits on Zatu, so Jinx got super squashed by Mrs. Puff. I missed it on Slowbro, but Pin Missile took it out in one hit thanks to a lucky critical. The second Zatu couldn't swim very well, because it died in one surf. And Pin Missile against a Psychic Grass type? Yeah, you can tell how well that one worked out. And I mean this, Will was the toughest of the Elite Four. Koga's team, being part bug and flying for the most part, was surfed to death. I surfed over Ariados, and then went for rollout on Venomoth. Not sure why I did that, but I did. I missed rollout on Fortress though, and decided to minimize. I haven't relied on this move too much this run, because most of the time when I do use it, I feel like it makes me more susceptible to being hit, but of course, Fortress has Swift. I built up rollout on Fortress, and the fourth and fifth hits of rollout took out Muck and Crobat. Because Koga's team is mainly poison typed, I wasn't too worried about this battle. Bruno's Hitmontop didn't die in one surf, and it used Dig. I used Minimize this once to see if Dig would miss, and it did. This could have done some very heavy damage to me for sure. I built up Rollout on Hitmonchan, who hit me with Thunder Punch, but it didn't do too much. Hitmonlee and Onyx went down to Rollout, and Machamp was where my Rollout reset. I opted for Surf, took it to Yellow Health, it missed Cross Chop, and Bruno was defeated. I'm not sure why I did this, but I didn't heal before I took on Karen. I used Rollout on Umbreon, it used Sand Attack, and I was so excited for the rest of the battle. That's sarcasm. Anytime there's a Pokemon with Sand Attack, I cry a little on the inside. And a lot on the outside. But Umbreon went down to a Surf after taking a Rollout. Pin Missile wasn't the best move to use against Vileplume, but it took it down to Yellow Health. I got paralyzed here too, but still hit my next move. Gengar cursed me, and even though I took it down in one hit, Murkrow survived because I kept getting paralyzed. Had I hit Murkrow and her Houndoom with rollout, they would have both fainted. But because of the curse, I had to start over. I minimized at the beginning of the next attempt, and in spite of minimizing, got hit with Confuse Ray and hit myself. Things looked worse than they did on the first attempt. But two Surfs got Umbreon, and because of the minimize, Vileplume missed with Petal Dance. Because I didn't get paralyzed, I attacked Gengar before it could curse me. But it licked me anyways for some reason, didn't curse me, and still paralyzed me. I was put in red health, but I tucked Gengar away nicely. Murkrow used Faint Attack, went down in one rollout, and it all depended on what Houndoom was going to do to see if I won this battle. It missed with Pursuit, and rollout rolled over the dog. Wow. This run got surprisingly interesting near the end here. There was just Lance standing in my way now. I started the battle with Rollout, and a critical hit knocked out Gyarados. But Mrs. Puff missed Rollout, I got paralyzed by Dragonite, it hit Thunder twice in a row, and even though this dragon went down, I automatically moved second for the rest of the battle. The next Dragonite used Blizzard instead of actually attacking me, went down in one Rollout, but then his third Dragonite used Outrage. Next attempt, I used Rollout, didn't get a critical hit, but Gyarados missed Surf. I also started the battle with Minimize just to help my chances. His first Dragonite missed Thunder Wave, and that made a world of difference in the rest of the battle. Rollout was tanking everything. Both Dragonites stood zero chance. Out came Aerodactyl, and it caught the brunt of a maxed out Rollout. With Charizard being his last Pokemon, I thought about using Rollout just so that it got hit with a four times effective move, but I opted for Stab Surf, and down went Lance, making me the Pokemon Champion. But as usual, there's another battle we want to pay close attention to. We've got to take on Red at the summit of Mount Silver, and there's only one gym battle that we need to pay close attention to in Kanto. And it's not Blue. Blaine was surprisingly a tough battle. Nah, I'm just kidding. Lieutenant Surge was way tougher than I gave him credit for. I tried to use Rollout through the gym, but I got paralyzed by Raichu, and it stung me twice in a row with Thunder. That's really all you need to know about the first attempt. Second time through, I just went for Surf on everything. Electric types don't actually resist water, so this is what I should have just done from the beginning. Made for an interesting detour in the run, though. 
Now let's head on to Mount Silver and battle the real champion, Red. Pikachu being his lead scared me. One Rogue Thunder could have been catastrophic. One Surf put it in Red, and it missed Thunder. Red used a full restore, I used Pin Missile just to make sure I don't waste all my Surfs, and one turn later, Pikachu went down. The main reason I saved Pin Missile on my team is because of this Espeon, and I got super lucky and took it down in a massive 5 hit Pin Missile. Snorlax gave me the perfect opportunity to set up Rollout. It kept using Body Slam, and I got really worried that I was going to be paralyzed, but it never happened. I think that's the most times I've been hit with Body Slam and never been paralyzed. Venusaur caught the last turn of Rollout, and the last member of his team I was worried about went down. I used Rollout on Blastoise, and it used Surf. It wasn't hitting hard, but it wasn't anything to just dismiss. It put me in red health before finally going down. One last Pokemon. Charizard could end me if I missed this very last rollout. But Mrs. Puff didn't, and this super-powered rollout put an end to Charizard. Holy cow. I beat Red on the first attempt with a Quillfish. And yes, indeed, you can beat Pokemon Crystal with just a single Quillfish. I feel like this run was more of a challenge than recent ones, but also not at the same time. Quillfish is just a weird-looking fish. I was honestly planning on teaching it Blizzard, or at least Icy Wind, but it never came down to that. Rollout was the star move of the run. Without Rollout, this could have been so much harder. So has the Stantler effect happened here? Do I have a newfound love for Quillfish? No. Definitely not. But it's cool, I guess. In a weird pufferfish sort of way. I have some run suggestions that I'm gonna honor by putting them up once they get completed. If you have any suggestions, please drop them in the comments. I've also just started a Nuzlocke on the channel in Pokemon Blue. This is very different from what I'm used to doing, so make sure you check that out, or one of the other videos on the channel. Until next time, see you later!